Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Josh and Jason Monday Christian and Conspiracy Podcast Show. I am your host, Josh Monday. If you don't know me, I'm a Christian rapper, devoted husband, father, and army veteran. Um, and today, guys, we got a very special guest, okay, guys? Uh, Bart Sabril. Um, please, if you could, check out his book. Uh, it's Moon Man, the true story of a filmmaker on the CIA hit list. Check out his documentaries. Uh, he's got uh, Astronauts Gone Wild. Also, a funny thing happened on the way to the moon, and I'm sure he has more. I just, uh, I, I just uh, don't have the full list in front of me. But um, uh, how's it going, Bart? It's going well. How about yourself, Josh? It's going good. I, 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 um, I have watched both of your documentaries, um, you know, prior, like a long time ago, and then recently I watched it again. Um, I heard you on Tinfoil Hat, and I was like, wow, all right, he's back out, you know. And I'm so glad to have you on. I really appreciate you giving me your time. I'm not like a huge show like Tim Full of Hat, but we are growing, though. And, and I really appreciate you giving me your time on, on here. Sure. No problem. Thank you. Um, so, I mean, I would like to I mean, I, I would like to kind of get into the, um, you know, the, the moon landing, you know, because I, I personally 100 uh, percent agree with what you put out. And, and I'm just to let you know up front, I'm a I'm a biblical cosmology. So biblical flat earther. I know that yeah, you're not, <laughs> but. Um, it, we, we could definitely still have a great conversation. I just don't believe the moon landing was real. And if all, everything that the scientists actually do say is true, then I don't believe that they could even go to the moon. I'm, I'm totally with you on what, on what, uh, your perception is on this and, and your, your, the evidence that you have presented. Yeah. The issue is not, uh, geography. The issue mm -hmm. is the corruption of the federal government. The earth could be a triangle. <laughs> and they would still fake the moon landing. They would still have gone, done the Gulf of Tonkin incident. They still would have done 9-11 and they still would have killed their own president in 1963, even if the world was shaped like a cube, a pentagon or a triangle. So I think that's a distraction designed to create disunity among mm -hmm. people. Uh, you, you know, see now you mentioned the Bible, mm -hmm. the one verse that, stands out to me the most that makes me think Jesus is not of the earth is when he says to love your enemies because the Jews are bombing the Muslims and the Muslims are bombing the Jews and the alleged Christian U.S. is bombing everybody else. Yes. So loving your enemies is very important and you could take that down to loving people who have a different point of view than you. Um, I believe strongly that the earth is a sphere mm -hmm. and i think it's a misinformation psyop to get people to think otherwise mainly designed to discredit people who believe that the moon landings are fake because as soon as bill casing's book we never went to the moon hit oprah yeah they immediately said oh you think the earth is flat as soon as my film a funny thing happened on the way to the moon came out they said oh you must think the earth is flat so they want to discredit the fact that the United States government did fake the moon landing and they want you to look crazy for saying such a thing and they'll tie that to whatever. So I think the issue is not geography. Now it'd be of different course. if Jesus says in order to enter the kingdom of heaven, you have to answer a geography exam. <laughs> That'd be different. I agree. But he never said that. And I agree. So, it's not even so about we can that, have yeah. a, we can have a difference of an opinion about that. The real issue is truth and lies, good uh -huh. and evil light and darkness and salvation or the lack thereof at the end of your life. That's the issue. And the fact is that the government did fake the moon landing. And as you know, a funny thing happened on the way to the moon opens up with the Tower of Babel. Yes. And I love that you do that. I love that you start out with Bible verses. This is what I try to do on my show. Um, we, we basically try to take a conspiracy and see how it relates to the Bible. I love how you put the Bible verses at the beginning. You started out, you know, like that. And, and I don't know, back then, were, were you a believer back then? Because I know that you said you got, oh, no, yeah, 1989 is when you got into the Bible, you said, right? So 2001, you had to have been. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a it. long and still ongoing journey. Yes, yes. <laughs> to, to be a believer. Yes. I'm, I'm not there yet. <laughs> I feel like I have to go to the principal's office every every so often <laughs> for some stupid thing I did or said. I know. Uh, I know. The, the fact is, though, uh, I looked into the moon landing being fraudulent based on w William Casey's book and testimony. And basically, I have always b believed in God. And so I opened up the film 
a funny thing happened on the way to the moon with scripture Mm -hmm. that says uh, where there is pride, then comes disgrace. And we know that the Tower of Babel, according to the Bible, it says that they built it specifically to boast. Yes. Look how tall we can make a building, because until about 200 years ago, for 6,000 years of recorded history, the tallest building that a person can make was the technological achievement of the world, mm-hmm. and is actually still going on to this day. So how ironic that the tallest building to boast was never finished. Yeah. Then we show the Titanic, that they had the audacity, the same publicity, the ship that God himself could not sink. Yep. And All we know what happened there. And then Richard Nixon, when he knew they were not on the moon, said putting a man on the moon was the greatest event since creation itself. Yep. Now, how ironic. The Titanic never made a voyage. The Tower of Babel never finished. And mankind's greatest accomplishment never happened. Yeah. And so when I started investigating this, I realized that there was actually a possibility that the moon landings were indeed fraudulent. And that was kind of scary. So I turned down the project. I thought, you know, this could be dangerous. And then someone gave me a one-year Bible uh, that has, you know, calendar division of the year. And five years went by and I had read the Bible five times. I, I wasn't a Christian, but it did convince me that there's right and wrong, good and evil, truth and darkness, you know, and lies going against each other. And I thought, you know, if they could go to the moon, Josh, that would have a certain level of significance historically to mankind. But if they couldn't go and they lied about it and they murdered people, that's actually more profound of an event in history than if they had actually gone. Do you see that? The faking of the moon landing, the faking of the moon landing, if true, is a greater event historically than if they had actually gone. And I realized that that if this is true, this is, a, this is something the world needs to know. So I changed my mind. I started producing the film, A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon, which was largely financed a million dollars by a board member who uh, works for an aerospace company that builds rockets for NASA. Who yes. Knows been landing for fake. <laughs> That is the craziest part, you know, yeah. and that's that's amazing. And and guys, we got to keep in mind, you know, so the, the Iraq war, the weapons of mass destruction, they lied about that. You talked about the JFK assassination. They lied about that. Uh, even when we invaded Iraq in 1990, they said that there's, you know, there was babies that were getting thrown on the floor. There was like a nurse that was actually testimony. She was from Kuwait. She was actually a Kuwaiti ambassador's daughter. And they lied about that. There's just so many different things that the government actually, you know, like you said, you talked about the Gulf of Tonga, and that's a false flag to put us into Vietnam. You know, all these people died. A million Vietnamese died. 58,000 American soldiers died somewhere around there. Um, 9-11, we obviously know about that, okay? Weapons of mass destruction into going in Iraq. And then they talked about, you know, the terrorists, uh, you know, they kept on saying that in 2001. Uh, there's just so many different things. Um, and I think, you know, even the Os- Osama bin Laden thing, they them going in and and and. and catching him or something, you know, I mean, there's just so many things that, that, that we could go into, but so we, we got to understand that. So um, most of the people that are listening to this podcast, they know that, but a lot of people that maybe new people that are coming in, they're going to probably, you know, need to, need to understand that they, they're lying all the time. Mostly every war I think has been false flag. Even the Russian, um, do you believe that even the Russian, when they said that uh, the cold war, I, th- I don't remember what the false flag was for that, but do you believe that was also a false flag just to put fear in, in the hearts of everybody? Well, the most repeated commandment in the Bible is do not fear. Isn't that interesting? Because if we truly have faith in God, then if we die, we're set for life, right? Yeah. So even dying doesn't scare us. The Bible says that the devil holds power over people because of their fear of death. So Why do they have a fear of death? Because they have a fear of judgment. Mm -hmm. Why do they have a fear of judgment? Is because they're unrepentant. So if you repent, you don't have a fear of judgment. You don't have a fear of death. And then you're no longer afraid. You see? Yes. And so you're right. All of the news stories are all based on fear. Fear of getting COVID. People are lining up to be tested, to be told whether they're sick or not. I mean, I think I would know. (laughs) 
<laughs> whether it. I'm sick or not, right? <laughs> yes. I would know. Yes, I have I to agree. wait fine for two hours so someone to tell me whether I'm sick. And then I'm to have a medical procedure for an illness I don't even have. Yes. To yeah, which is prevent crazy. it in the future. Yes. That's kind of interesting. And all that is, of course, fear-based. And there you go. Yeah. The world, as we know from the Bible, believe it or not, it's not run by who you think it is. Uh, I was in church once, a very good biblical church, and they asked once, it might have been a Wednesday because it was a little interactive, they said, uh, who's the Lord of the earth? And everyone raised their hand, Jesus. And the guy said, wrong. Yeah. Read your Bible. Yes. Yeah. The Bible the says devil. that Lucifer is Lord of the earth for now. In fact, he offered Jesus the kingdoms of the world if he would bow down to Lucifer and worship him. He, he said they belong to Lucifer and Lucifer can give them to anyone he wants. You think he's going to give them to honest people? Come on. He, even in Revelation, he's got the deed to the earth and Jesus is the lamb is the only one that could take the deed to the earth. So yeah, so Satan is definitely, and we could see it, you know, I mean, if you start digging into like the black nobility, the secret societies, the, you know, all that different stuff and that angle of conspiracies, or I believe a lot of it is obviously true to me, but um, you're going to see that Lucifer's at the top of the Freemasons. He's at the top of the Illuminati. He's at the top of all these different secret societies. And obviously all these, go the, our government is just stacked with all these people. So we could say that the, that Satan right now is on top of our, you know, our government. So the lies, it's going to be no problem for them to lie. And I, I think it's a good thing that, that Mark Twain said, it's easier to fool people than convince, uh, than to convince them that they've been fooled. So with this, well, yeah, we have to look, look, look at that remark. It's easier to fool someone than to convince them that they've been fooled because to convince them that they've been fooled, they have to admit that they're wrong. Yeah. I went right. to another church once, very biblical church to the best of their ability. And they asked once, who here likes to be wrong? And I was the only one willing to raise my hand because they were so arrogant. They had an answer for everything, even if they were wrong. <laughs> and I actually liked being wrong for two reasons. Number one, I'm learning something new. And number two, I'm not walking around in error. The Bible says that God opposes the proud, mm -hmm. but gives grace to the humble. And Obadiah says, pride blinds you yeah. from seeing the truth. So if I were to write a definition, if I were writing the dictionary of pride, what is pride? Pride is the unwillingness to be wrong. Mm. And humility is the willingness to be wrong. Yeah. And the reason why people cannot see the simple truth that the moon landings are fake is because they do not want to admit that they're wrong. So they can be fooled pretty easily. Yeah. But to admit that they're wrong is very hard. And that's why this, you know, truth is still somewhat repressed. Uh, people are waking up and people are seeing it. I mean, all that people have to do is go to Sabrell. It's my last name, S as in Sam, I, B as in boy, R-E-L, Sabrell.com. They can see all of these video links that are in the book for free. And if you've never heard of this, you know, watch if anything happened on the way to the moon and you'll see classified footage uncovered of fake photography of the first moon mission proven beyond a doubt. Yeah, that they didn't go. Then you have photographic evidence of shadows from photographs, uh, you know, which if they're sunlit, the shadows should always be parallel no matter where you go. And in these Apollo pictures, they intersect at 90 degrees. Yeah, the shadows do from objects five feet apart, which is 100 percent electrical lighting, which means they're not on, you know, the moon. Of course, of course. And then we have a deathbed confession. Uh, the book Moon Man culminates with someone who was there he was chief of security of the military base where apollo 11 was filmed mm. and on his deathbed he confessed that he was there while they filmed apollo 11 at such and such military base on these dates stood beside president johnson while they did it wow and he gave us the code name for the project the location the dates and 15 people who were there as eyewitnesses 
So, and Lyndon Johnson, if you guys look up him, you know, he's got Freemason, you know, all over him as well. A lot of the astronauts also, uh, I've, I've heard, I mean, I'm, I haven't, I haven't confirmed it, but also Freemasons. So as you see, man, they're all part of the deceit, you know? So, um, do you believe, uh, I know that some people throw that out there that, that Stanley Kubrick maybe filmed it. Um, or do you, do you think maybe that he did film it and help them with like the set and the props because he did that, you know, uh, 2001 space odyssey. That's like a rumor that went out there. Do, do you believe that? Well, I mean, let me add that the third proof, first we have photographic evidence, you uh-huh. know, then we have an eyewitness who was there. Then we have the logic Yeah. that today with, you know, the best technology, NASA can only send astronauts one thousandth the distance to the moon, right? Which is a space station at 250 miles. So they're claiming that 50 years ago with one millionth of computing power of a cell phone, they had one million times greater technology in 1969 than they do today. That's what they're claiming. Yeah. That this is the first time in recorded history that technology has gone backwards. There's never been in the history of the world a technological milestone like flying across the Atlantic or blowing up the first atomic bomb that 50 years later wasn't 100 times, 1,000 times better. Yeah. Actually, for the first time in history, a technological milestone could not be repeated 50 years later because when Lindbergh flew across the Atlantic in 1927, 10 years later, there were thousands of aircraft, a hundred times more complicated flying, flying across the Atlantic. The atomic bomb went off in 1945, 10 years later, it was 1000 times more powerful. So if they yeah. could go to the moon, <laughs> a 1969 technology, first try, right? there would have been, we would have been on Mars 10 years later and in another solar system by now, there'd be bases all over the moon. I so agree. we can prove it deductively that they didn't go. Unless you can show me another time in world history where a technological milestone was achieved and no one re- was able to repeat it 50 years later. No, Never no. happened in the history of the world. They even started so, out with the airplane. You got you can think about that. They started out with the airplane, right? Just when they first got invented, like you said, and now look at it now, they're going mock, you know, whatever, 1.5. Yeah. So, I mean, we they did fake the moon landing. It's just the way that it is, whether you accept it or not. Now, who was in charge of the fake photography? You could have asked the general of the media department at the Pentagon, gotten great security and amateur results, or you could hire the best filmmaker on the planet who coincidentally was shooting a film about going to the moon. Yeah. 2001, a space (laughs) odyssey, right? Yes. So, yes, I think Kubrick filmed the first mission. There's clues that he kind of left in the film The Shining, several clues uh, that indicates that he did. He even left clues in his last film, Eyes Wide Shut, which he insisted opened on the 30th anniversary of the launch to the moon. Wow. Yep. For some that's reason. They, that's the way they do. They, they do that though. It's like predictive programming. They, they, they like to release stuff like that slowly so that they, you know, for their karma. Um, who do you think the main players were involved? Like with, I know, obviously you said, um, uh, well, you do, you, you might have a list in here. I don't know if you want to go over them or, or keep them, keep them between you, but who do you think the main players were that were involved in the, in the hoax and the moon landing? Well, those 15 people uh, okay. are mentioned in the book. This is okay. a handwritten list given to me by the chief of security who was there while they filmed Apollo 11 Okay. in June of 1968 at a particular military base in the United States. Now, he was given a list of 15 people. He was the military police officer of the base, the chief of security military police. So he basically was given a list of VIPs, 15 people Mm. who were allowed in to observe the faking of the moon landing. Johnson was one of the 15 people. And I got a list of some other people. Yeah. They're still alive. You can keep it on wrap and and get the book if you want to find out. Okay, guys. Um, Yeah. I mean, just go to Sabrell, my last name, Sabrell.com, and you can get a copy of it. It's on Audible. I read it. It's on print for 20 bucks and you get it on Kindle for like, I don't know. 10 or something like that yeah okay so yeah and i i picked up the book and and i started reading it i'm reading two books at the moment right now so it's when i get through this i'm gonna i'm gonna that's excellent one for each eye i'm (laughs) no i'm trying to uh i got the gary wayne's book i'm reading and i'm trying to read your book as well and then the bible i get so much stuff to research it's crazy um at what point do you start believing nasa you know like i know that nasa they say that the the um 
They say that they have the space station out there uh, orbiting at 17,000 miles an hour. And at what point do you believe NASA? And I, and uh, what point are you like, okay, yeah, they're doing that, but they're not doing this. Is there, is there something that you feel like that, you know, they're deceiving us? Still? Well, yeah, because uh, I mean, th there is the capability of traveling faster than the speed of sound. Uh -huh. Now, how often do fighter jets do that? Actually, not very often. How often do commercial aircraft do that? Really not very often at all. None since the Concorde. There's kind of a limit to what is reasonable and going faster than the sound barrier is not really necessary and it just causes problems. And so basically you can orbit the earth, but mm -hmm. you can't leave earth orbit because of radiation mm -hmm. called the Van Allen radiation belt. Most people don't even know about. It starts at about a thousand miles up and extends approximately 30,000 miles. Now, Every manned mission, Gemini, Mercury, Space Shuttle, the space station, Soyuz, was all below the radiation belt, except going to the moon. You'd have to go through it. So one of the clips you, you can see at sabrell.com is Kelly Smith from NASA admitting that the radiation belt that surrounds Earth is dangerous and that the technology necessary for an astronaut to survive going through it has yet to be invented. Yes. So how did they go through it to the moon exactly? And so you basically see that they can orbit the Earth, uh, but they cannot leave Earth orbit, at least in a manned vehicle. I mean, you can x-ray a toaster a thousand times, it'll still make toast. You x-ray a human a thousand times, you're gonna have trouble. So I think they can send probes through the radiation. Uh, there are satellites in the radiation belt, you know, uh -huh. in geosync orbit, a human with organs and tissue yeah. can have a problem with the radiation. So it's kind of a limit, just like kind of the sound barrier, even though technically you could go past the sound barrier, it's just not practical to do it. And the same thing, Von Braun said you could go to the moon in one rocket, mm -hmm. but it would have to weigh 800,000 tons worth of fuel. He said the numbers are mathematically irrefutable. Okay, wow. so if he said, in order to go to the moon, of course, this is, you know, mind you, from his earlier publications, he said these are mathematically irrefutable numbers. You need a rocket that weighs 800,000 tons to reach the moon. The Saturn V only weighed 2,500 tons. It's a difference of about 30,000%. Wow. So apparently you can't go to the moon today Otherwise, there'd be bases on the moon, right? I mean, it's pretty simple. There are bases at the South Pole, and the South Pole has minus 100 degrees and 100 mile per hour winds, and there are bases there. Why? Because it's humanly possible. If it were humanly possible to go to the moon, there would be bases all over there. Of course. There aren't bases there simply because it can't be done. It pretty speaks for itself. So, unfortunately, this is the world that we live in that our government that claims to be, you know, the light on a hill and democracy and freedom for the whole world while they overthrow democratically elected governments all, all over the place. <laughs> they fake the moon landing, they do 9-11, they kill their own president, so forth and so on. And somehow they continue to get away with it to this day. They have their own employee, William Benny, who worked for the NSA for 30 years in upper management. He goes on national TV and he says, oh, by the way, the NSA listens to the private phone calls of presidents, senators, congressmen, and Supreme Court justices in order to blackmail them, to get dirt on them, to have them vote a particular way. He says it as a fact, not a single congressional investigation. Wow. How yeah. can this be? How can there not be a congressional investigation when an employee says, I, I witnessed Supreme Court justices being blackmailed? Isn't that interesting? How's the weather? <laughs> that's so funny okay you know? so, yeah and and um i know they they had, there's other ways to you know i i think uh the blackmail gets really deep and disgusting you know epstein's island stuff like that you know the washington dc scandal are, are the you know lincoln's at greater a lot of, levels than you imagine of course yeah it's my understanding that the blackmail reaches hospital administrators mm -hmm. ceos of soda pop companies yeah 
local, regional, you know, metro council people. Yeah. It's at every level possible. Yep. Uh, infiltrated to the greatest degree. Okay. So um, another thing that I was going to bring up, I, I mean, I was in the military. Sometimes they would, you know, I, I, I wasn't in combat, but I was close to a combat zone. So there are people that, that definitely have some guts. I think it would take extreme, like extreme guts to, to, uh, to even do what they said they did. You know, what about the thermosphere? That's something that I, that, that somebody brought up before. I think on, um, I think I heard it on, um, on a radio show where they were talking about how hot the thermosphere is. That's something that's, that, uh, it's, it's like 1200 degrees Celsius. I believe it gets all the way up to 1800 degrees Celsius. That's, that's something that would be uh, definitely hard for them to go through. The fact that we're going 66,600 miles an hour around the sun. Um, and you know, and then they say the moon is orbiting at 2,800 miles an hour. That's, that would be like, you know, once, once you know that, what if you came out of earth's uh, gravity, what would happen? When did it like snap? Let me ask you something, uh, Josh. What's, yes, the sir. Most, what's the most valuable thing that you have? Me? Yeah. I, I think my soul. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're saying yeah, your eternity, what good is it to gain the whole world or forfeit your soul? Okay, so within this realm here, not the future realm, uh-huh. what's the most valuable thing that you have? Within this realm? Oh, my yeah. family. My Maybe. But God is, well, I'd say God is the most valuable thing I have no matter what, but I, I, I mean, let's, I, I, uh, let's, let's be pagan. Let's be practical. Let's be atheistic. Uh-huh. You know, let's be let's pure logical. What's the most valuable thing that you have? They would have, they would say money, I guess. Bank. Oh, bank boy, account. did you get that one wrong? <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. I, I don't, I'm sorry. <laughs> what, what would be the answer? <laughs> okay. You could be a, a billionaire, right? Uh-huh. And you could lose it all and get down to zero. And you can make it all again, couldn't you? Uh-huh. But if you're away while your toddler son is learning to walk because you're pursuing a job that pursues money, but you miss your toddler learning to walk, can you ever go back in time and Oh, there? time. Oh. Time. I'm sorry. There man. you go. I'm sorry. That time is, is definitely... the most valuable thing that you have. There you go. Time. Uh-huh. Now, Americans spend approximately 100 hours a week watching television. That's two and a half work weeks. Wow. Yeah. Now, they're spending an hour commuting each way and then eight hours, then sleeping, and then laundry and food and then they're watching television with almost every other waking moment. How can they change the world? And so if the most valuable thing that we have is time, then guess what uh, Satan's number one target is? Take away your time. Yeah. and, And how does he do that? By distracting us. Yes. Because... The more distracted we are, the less time we have to get right with God before the door closes. I agree. 100%. So if I may say to the conspiracy community, this, you know, the the, the 66,000 miles and this, that and the other about the sun and the moon, that's a distraction. It's wasting your time. The issue is not geography because it never says once in the entire Bible you have to have geography once in order to be oh, saved. My, my, All that it says is you need to repent of your sin in order to be saved. For so sure. 100%. All I'm saying is that in the last days, which I presume you believe we're living in, probably. Yes, sir. Yeah. And then time is even all the more valuable. So we need to find, we need to boil down what's really important. I think we need to stop debating whether the earth is round or flat or whatever. It, it's irrelevant because it doesn't have anything to do with salvation. Yes, God sir. did not say you have to pass a geography exam. So the, if, if the most important thing is life is getting your soul right with God, and we have a limited amount of time to do that, then anything time spent discussing the shape of the earth or peanuts or whatever doesn't have anything to do with seeking and saving the lost and repenting of our sin, getting right with God, staying right with God. 
the corruption of the government is a little relevant because it says to expose the deeds of evil. Yes, sir. So that we yep. can discern between, you know, right and wrong. And the Holy Spirit is a spirit of truth. However, I think we need to, conspiracy people are following these bones thrown out by the CIA and we're chasing after these bones and we're destroying everybody's most valuable resource through time. That's true. Yeah. There is a, and, and I think the, the truth, the true truth is in the Bible. That's what I believe. I always tell my, my listeners that. So that, that, that the truth has been sitting there this whole time. You just never took time to, to, to read it. It's sitting right there on your nightstand. You know, that's what I always tell my readers. Like everybody, like there's a lot of conspiracy shows out there and you can, you can go down the rabbit holes of each one. And then what you're going to find out is they don't have the answer for you. But right now, uh, Bart, right now, and, and me, we're, we're kind of having church right now because we're both in agreement with God, and 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 we have the answer. No, well, I don't have the answer. God has the answer, okay? I'm just telling you, we can just show you the answer, you know? So I think it's very important, vastly important, and, and I really ap- I appreciate what you're talking about right now because it's true. Time. And what they do, I think, with these conspiracies is there's so many levels to it that you just keep going and going and going and going, and then they send you down a different rabbit hole. They, they know how to send different um, avenues that you're going to keep digging and never find the actual truth. So I, I do agree. And I, and, and I think that um, everything's a distraction, including football. Uh, they put it on Sundays, which <laughs> takes you away from, that's just an example, football. Uh, they put it on that's Sundays. a good example. I mean, yeah, yeah. people, people do, would people lay outside of church in their sleeping bags to get tickets you know, yeah. church. No, yeah, I don't think they would. And they put it on Sunday. <laughs> they put it on Thursday nights. Thursday nights is like usually Bible study nights for a lot of churches. Um, Monday nights, you know. So what they want to do is they have they want to have the male just totally engulfed in something like that. It's like an idol. And then also they take the Super Bowl trophy and then they bring it down, which is a huge idol. And then they all kiss it. They all pass it around. It's just it's it's insane. But yeah, I mean, that's just I didn't mean to say it like that, including football, because it's an obvious one. But, you know, UFC is something that I'm big into, you know, sports for men and then women. There's, you know, just a whole bunch of stuff. But yeah, it's it's interesting. The devil, you know, he's definitely deceitful and he knows how to do it. And back then, the moon landing was almost like an idol because America was just. They, they like to pledge allegiance to the flag. Uh, they they, they want to say, like, in God we trust, but what God are they really trusting? You know, they don't understand it. And me, I am, you know, I'm totally, I was in the military, but I, I, I slowly am re- and understanding and, and, and reading and understanding what, what this all this stuff is truly about. You know, I don't pledge allegiance to the flag. That's not what I do. I pledge allegiance to the Lord, to God. I'm now not instead of being a soldier for the United States, I'm a soldier for God now, 100 percent, you know, and, I, and, and it's a it's a lot deeper feeling when you're saving souls compared to just maybe saving lives, you know, um, the temporal life. Yeah, I mean, I tried not to get involved in sports, although I have put a big bet on a female athlete to win the triathlon. Uh, his, uh, her name is Jeff. Uh-huh. And I have really good uh, <laughs> feeling about her winning the competition. I put a put $100,000 on it. And I'm pretty sure Jeff is going to win the female decathlon. <laughs> The times, the times are so interesting. Now, my point about that 66,000 miles an hour was it just like, I don't know, because I'm not, I haven't studied yet, but like, if the earth is here and then the moon is here and we're, and we're going so fast, like, what about like, like, what about the ship? Like, what if when they were orbiting the the moon, couldn't they get out of that? Yeah, I understand that. So if that's scary, if, if time is the most valuable thing that we have and saving souls before the doors closed is the most important thing then figuring out how the earth rotates when you could be sharing your faith and studying the bible with somebody and there's only so much time in the world you could spend it (laughs) figuring out about the moon and the earth or you could have a bible study with somebody and bring them into the banquet hall for all eternity you could either enter, enter the banquet hall with these five souls so you could say look god look i proved this mathematically (laughs) <laughs> Which one do you think? Bart, I love you, man. I love how you do this. I love it. Yeah, I just I just think it would take a um, you know, for the moon landing part, it would just take a lot of uh guts to, to even travel and even do that. I think it's insane. So um as I watch your your documentary and everything, and it, it's just crazy. And um, yeah, it's it's interesting stuff, you know, very interesting stuff. So um what else, what other questions did I have here? Um oh yeah, like 
another like I was kind of I was kind of talking about like you kind of see how they throw the distractions out there like um like the the Chris Rock thing happening you know when he got slapped or whatever like they they and I was talking about the football thing um it's just it's crazy man it's crazy what do you do you have um I kind of went over most of the stuff I wanted to go over um and then astronauts gone wild. Did, did you have any 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 type of astronauts that, that 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 you did believe that you did feel like that were that were that were sincere when you were interviewing them? Well, <laughs> you know, believe it or not, Buzz Aldrin is a pretty sincere person to the best of his ability. He's kind of stuck. Uh, which we've all been there with some sin we've had trouble overcoming. Um, you know. My heart goes out to the guy and to all of them. Uh, they're in a tricky situation. You know, if it were just one person who claimed to have walked on the moon, then they probably would have told the truth by now. But it's kind of ruining the reputation of the other people. I think if Christ weren't coming back and there weren't some common asteroid rogue planet heading toward Earth, the truth would probably eventually come out probably within 20 years. But probably before then, we're going to have some huge catastrophe that that's the least worry of the people is going to be whether we went to the moon or not in 1969 they're going to be trying to find water and yeah. so you know i would be more concerned about his eternal salvation i would be and of course my own the bible says to work daily mm -hmm. you know with your own salvation to work it out with fear and trembling i'm preaching the word and i have to stay faithful myself and uh he, believe it or not, is doing his best. Uh, we're all at different levels in our life. There's a possibility one of them might come forward and tell the truth. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah, uh, It would be a blessing to the world, uh, to our nation, if the truth were to come out. I mean, just imagine that one of them confessed on national TV. It would be, you know, a beautiful, brilliant moment and a shock. Mm -hmm. to the world yeah and um it would it obviously bring about change and it might cause the stock market to crash and who knows what uh but it would uh probably bring good in the long run it's kind of like if you paint over mold it gets rid of the problem for about six months a year and then it just keeps coming back and it comes back even worse and eventually you just can't keep painting over it. Do you, what and, do you think? What do you think would have happened if they would have like if they didn't fake it and no one ever if they never went to the moon? I mean, they, do you think that the? I mean, well, that would be a much a much better world. Do you Definitely. think that the like the Russia would have been like, oh, okay, we know we can overpower America? I, I don't think the lie was worth it, in my opinion. Now, of of I, I what do you, what do you think? Do you think Russia would have? Because obviously nobody else tried to go to the moon after that, right? Well, no, China, I guess, right? It, it can't be done. It can't be done for a number of reasons. Number one, there's not enough fuel, yeah. you know, in a single rocket to go. You have to ferry fuel up to a space station. Von Braun said so in a Walt Disney publication. You can see it in living color. He shows a space station. He says you have to ferry up fuel and multiple trips in order to have enough fuel to go to the moon. Then he says you'd have to land on the moon and go into a cave because the moon is being pelted with tens of thousands of micrometeorites every day. They're the size of a grain of sand, but they're traveling at 25,000 miles an hour. Oh and if it hits your spacecraft space suit, it's gonna cause you know, explosive decompression, you're gonna die. He actually calculated there would be a 20, uh, every 24 hours, there would be a 50% chance of a catastrophic failure because of micrometeorites, meaning you have to immediately go into a cave. Otherwise, you can't just walk around the moon with <laughs> sand particles. Play like golf. Twenty five thousand <laughs> miles an hour. Yeah. You know, and uh, so that never happened. There's so many ways to prove that it didn't happen. There's so much more proof that we didn't go than we did, and simply the logic that they're claiming. They had greater technology back then than they do now. I mean, look at Elon Musk. He, he tried to land a rocket vertically and it blew up the first five times. Now, wait a minute. He has 21st century computers. Yeah. The rocket had six engines on it and each engine had a separate super, super computer 
to make sure that thing was gimbaled properly to land vertically. And it blew up the first five times trying to land vertically. So how did they land vertically on the moon 50 years earlier on the first <laughs> attempt with one million to computing power? How did they do that exactly? <laughs> yeah. I saw you know? some, I saw some interview with the gentleman that was orbiting the moon too. And he, I guess he saw the backside of the moon and it, it, it just, and then when they came back, the interviews that they had with these astronauts too, like they were so uncomfortable and it just, you could just see their body language, you know, it's just, yeah, you know, to me, to me, Josh, the convincing moment, and I described this in the book, Moon Man, which you can get at sabral.com. When I popped in the tape that said, don't show to the public. And they were faking part of photography right in front of your eyes. I mean, that was the epiphany for me. Hey, we really didn't go, but other people, it's like you said, they look at the expressions of the astronauts at their first press conference and they look like they're at a funeral instead of the Super Bowl, you know, winning locker room. Yeah. And that convinces a lot of people. And sure enough, they're lying through their teeth about the greatest accomplishment. They hate doing it. They regret doing it and they're doing it anyway. And the stars also like, you know, like they said they can, we, we, I don't, I don't recall seeing a star in the sky, you know, it's just like, Oh, what? You know, so that's and then there's no stars in any of the pictures, too, which I thought was interesting because they couldn't really fake where the stars were at. Right. They, they, it'd be tough for them to, to put those. Yeah, in, you know? they couldn't, you know, they couldn't fake the astrological position, of the constellations in the background on the moon, because then yeah. they'd have to be moving. The moon is moving. The earth is moving. The stars are moving. And then the position of them, they it's couldn't fake all that. So they said it didn't come out in the exposure. Yeah. Which theoretically is true. If you have the iris mostly closed for a bright surface and a white, you know, spacesuit, they probably would not show up. Mm -hmm. But why not just pan the camera over a few feet, open the iris, take a picture of the stars? That would be clearer than at any other time in world history. Yeah, <laughs> never did that. For Which some is reason. important, right? Or you bringing. Know, they, or, they took a, they took a car to the moon, but not a telescope. And then, yeah. just, and, you know, like you would really get in a car yeah, and drive far away from your life support systems to where if the car broke down, you would <laughs> run out of oxygen walking back. You think you would really do that? I exactly. Mean, come on. Yeah. And like you, you said, know, a telescope, a telescope, that would have been like the, the best telescope shot that they, that we've had in history still back be then. there today. Right. You know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, but they never did it. Yeah. People wanted to believe it. They had no reason to doubt that they would lie about such an important thing. And oddly enough, it was so easy to fake. There's no independent press coverage. It's not like World War II. Yeah. We can have reporters everywhere. It's a TV picture controlled by the government and out in outer space somewhere. Just trust <laughs> us. Yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> $55 million you know? a day, trust us. Yeah. Um, you know, and then so... I heard, I heard you, we're going to switch, we're going to switch gears real quick. I heard you talking about the rapture, um, you know, that, that, that doctrine, that teaching. Um, why do you think that, that, that the churches are, are, are lying about that? You know, why, why are they doing this? Is it to gain more members? What, what do you think? Well, the, if you study it, the rapture doctrine was invented by the Jesuits in the 1850s. There you go. All right. And, and the seven year uh, tribulation. The I heard Bible, too. The, Jesus says out of his own mouth, word for word after the tribulation of those days did you hear mm -hmm. what i said yeah. jesus said after the tribulation of those days then he will return yeah there you go because if people believe they're going to be taken away and then it doesn't happen they're going to have their faith destroyed and that's what happens you know it's like uh daniel in the lion's den and daniel and his friend or his friends in the fiery furnace they weren't raptured away they were in the tribulation. They were simply protected from it. That's why the Bible says, Jesus says, pray that you're protected here on earth from the tribulation that is to come. There's only one second coming. Mm -hmm. It says the dead in Christ will rise first. It never says people are going to suddenly disappear first. Yeah. No, that's yeah. made up. Yeah. It's Hollywood BS. Mm -hmm. And why does, do they want you to believe this? Because when the tribulation comes, you will be here. Yeah. And and whether you'll be protected or not is based on your genuine Christianity, not mm -hmm. your illusion of Christianity. Yeah. And so, you know, it's a it's a end times false doctrine. The Bible clearly says the dead in Christ will rise first so that if the dead in Christ aren't coming out of the graves, then Jesus, there's no pre-tribulation rapture. The rapture is Christ's second coming. 
the dead in Christ rise first. It says so. Mm -hmm. The dead in Christ rise first, not people living around. You know what I mean? Yes. Jesus says after the tribulation of those days, says it word for word, after the tribulation, I will come back, the dead in Christ. So it's all made up stuff. You can follow the preachers who preach this stuff and their private lives aren't that good, Mm. you know? And uh, so it's a false doctrine. What can you do? One of many false doctrines. Yes. You know, like not repenting. The Catholics teach you don't have to repent of your sin and Pentecostals, you know, teach various this, that, and the other. That's not true. And all religions have, you know, mingled with truth and lies all together. The yeah, Catholic yeah. Church has truth in it. There is a God, fear God. That's a good tr- teaching of truth. The Pentecostals, some of them have good teachings about faith and healing and things like that. But they all have some false doctrines in them, too. You got to be careful. Yeah, so. the devil The devil likes to give you, you know, 90% truth, 10% liar, 95% truth, 5% liar, or even, you know, 50% truth, 50% lie. As long as that lie is in there, I think he he loves it, you know, and, and I agree um, with the, the Catholic Church. And they were also doing like indulgences where you were like paying them for them to have your family go to heaven. They say your family's in purgatory, pay us and, you know, pay the priests or pay the church and we'll, we'll get them out of purgatory. So there's some deceit and disgusting stuff. Well, I mean, there, Jesus know. said out of his own mouth, called no one father, that church calls people father. Yes. He said out of his own mouth, do not pray by vain repetition. Yeah. How do they pray? Say 10 hell Marys, which is yeah. vain repetition. There's, you know, so many things for and mary, people, the mary virgin, virgin mary yeah that like she's not mentioned by paul or not mentioned by the bible Revelation says Jesus. the bible says twice in the gospels that she and jesus's brothers doubted his divinity mm. okay and then when he was referring to mary and the you know banquet at canaan he says what do you want woman yeah you know <laughs> yeah, yeah not even mother yeah. woman yeah you know and uh who was twisting his divinity he his plan was to not reveal a miracle yet and she tried to talk him into it and the queen of mother the queen of heaven is (laughs) (laughs) the queen of heaven was was simiramis you know and and that they were they were you know baking bread for you know mary was a a blessed person yeah divine person and is in the grave asleep like the rest of us the idea that you pray to people is totally ridiculous yeah you only pray to christ so in hebrews read the book of hebrews yep only pray to christ you know the only mediator between man and god is and how can you pray to people who are dead and in their graves anyway you know I know. I mean? Yeah. It's, be, that's because if people, if people are in heaven after they die, then why are the dead in Christ raising first? Yeah. Then they'd have to leave heaven, go back into the grave and come back out again. No, the Bible says everyone's dead until judgment day. You're woken up and either you're alive forever or you're dead forever. The so, idea of being tortured in heaven, that's something the Catholic church created to sell the indulgences. You know, God's not a torture. He's not going to torture you for 10 trillion years for 70 years of sin. Mm-hmm. You will be dead forever. Remember, the gift is eternal life to the redeemed. Mm-hmm. So if you're in hell going off, oh, I'd only lived a better life, then you also have eternal life, right? It's just not pleasant. No, eternal life is only for the redeemed. So just like a bug, if I splat it, it's not going off. I'd only moved a few inches <laughs> no, it's just, it's just dead forever. So after judgment day, you're either dead forever or alive forever. It's pretty simple. So um, quick question. So on the, uh, cause I mean, I'm still studying this part too, about like when he says absent from the body present with the Lord, does that mean uh, that when you die, you get taken to heaven? Or what about the story of like Lazarus and um, you know, where he, when he passed well, that's away, a story, but- that's a pair, it's a parable, not a literal. <laughs> that's why it's called a parable. And then that was what he was longing for. The Uh Bible refers to people as being asleep. It says King David is asleep in the grave. It says Lazarus is Uh asleep. He's not in heaven, Uh right? He is dead. He is asleep. It says people who have died in the New Testament must say six six times, Uh people who are asleep in the Lord, Uh right? If the dead in Christ are rising first, then they're not in heaven, are they? Uh Right? 
So yeah, very interesting. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like I said. I'm still I'm still studying it too. You not know, that, that, that's not a salvation issue either. No, you can no, think no. the earth is the earth is round or flat and still yeah. make it into heaven. You can not be aware of the state of the dead, in my opinion, and still make it into heaven. However, it's important at some occasion to know that the dead are dead because when you get into spiritualism and thinking talk to dead people, that's just yes, possible. That's just Robert, demons. It's just demons Robert talking says to you. the dead know nothing, right? Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, it's like necromancy. That's what happens, you know, like when people, like, you know, they do go to somebody like that, a spiritual person, like, hey, I want to speak to my aunt, Margaret. It's just a demon talking to you in her, in her voice, you know? So, yeah, it's definitely uh, interesting stuff. So, um, is there, um, it's, we're coming on about an hour here. I think we, we covered a lot. Um, is there anything that you want to leave uh, our audience with, you know, like, is there anything you want to say, like, hey, um, any anything that's of importance? I think you've talked about, a, you've hit on a lot of stuff. Um, any any last things that you would like to tell our audience? Well, just uh, stay faithful to the end. Matthew 24, Jesus says, and I think he's talking to believers because of the increase of wickedness in the last days, the love of most believers will grow cold. Mm. but he who holds to the very end shall be saved. So we have to hold to the very end, have to get right with God and stay right with God to the very end. And then if you want to go to Sabrell, S-I-B-R-E-L, Sabrell.com, get a copy of the book. You can read about all of this stuff and see all the links that back it up. And it is what it is. We live in a fallen world where they lied about mankind's greatest accomplishment. Yeah. What a surprise. Yeah. And we're living in this little end time scenario that's been going on for the last couple of years. What is that all about? The people who run the world, according to my understanding of biblical prophecy, when Jesus says that there'd be greater tribulation unless God intervenes at the end, no one will survive, that the evil people will win. Yes. And so they've done a fabulous job killing Kennedy. Gulf of Tonkin, faking the moon landing, 9-11, the last little thing going on for two years. Yeah. Been a fabulous job. But it seems like they're only getting better. Yeah. So I say there's no hope except in God. So if you repent of your own sin, get right with God, it won't matter, will it? It won't. Yeah. And if you pass away from COVID or you pass away from cancer, or you pass away, pass away from anything, it doesn't matter. Right, because yeah, or, you, you or were... McDonald's, <laughs> yeah, McDonald's, from that too, <laughs> oh, sugars, whatever. Had some French fries. Oh, <laughs> now, Bart, I just want to say, you know, I know that you are, you know, I just really want to let you know, I appreciate you coming on, and I love the fact that you're into the Lord and, and you're, you recite the Bible verses, and and you're, and it's just amazing. I love it, you know. So I appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Um, maybe sometime uh, in the future, if you're okay with it, we can have like a little Bible study on here. On, on whatever subject of your choice, or, or make, maybe I could send you some subject and we can just have a straight Bible study where we'll just talk straight, straight biblical. Is okay. that okay with you? Sure. All right. Awesome. Well, uh, let's end this in prayer. Um, Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you so much for blessing us with a clear connection. Um, anybody that's listening right now, you guys heard the message, uh, the moon landing and everything, Lord, we, you know, that's something that was exposed that, that we like to expose, but obviously the most important thing is saving souls as Bart was hitting on. So I just want to pray for Bart. I pray for his health. I pray for his safety, Lord. Um, I know that he's exposing a lot of stuff that a lot of lies. And there's a lot of people that, 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 don't like this. You know, there's uh, evil that don't like it, but I just want to pray for Bart that he keeps on reading his Bible. And I pray that you just keep him uh, healthy and safe, Lord. And uh, I just want to say, God, we appreciate everything you do for us. And thank you in Jesus name. Amen. All amen. right. Thank you, brother. I really appreciate you. And uh, to all the listeners, please subscribe. Uh, please go uh, get his book. If anybody listened to the end, comment below but get his book okay it's the moon man a true story of a filmmaker on a cia hit list okay guys please get yeah, his book just go to my last name sabrell.com yeah he does this for free guys he jumped on a podcast for free just to expose all this stuff and he makes uh you know awesome documentaries so please check those out too thank you guys for listening we really appreciate you and god bless you